Today, a new gaming GPU maker is catching up to NVIDIA. AMD's new GPU is releasing everywhere? We finally have specs and therefore performance for NVIDIA's upcoming cards. And here are AMD's next-gen desktop APUs. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time, man. First up for today, if you've been following this channel, you know that the Chinese company More Threads released a gaming GPU called the MTT S80. Now, it is a little old at this point, but they've actually been doing a ton of driver updates to really give it quite a bit more performance. To the point of where, as you can see down here, it says new driver optimizations have enabled the Chinese vendor More Threads MTT S80 gaming graphics card to rival NVIDIA's GTX 1650 at 4K. Now, obviously, this is the GTX 1650, so it's nothing to write home about or anything like that. But given how terrible the MTT S80 was when it was first released versus how much performance they've been able to get out of it, it is really impressive. And honestly, the 1650, while it is old, it's not that powerful. For a Chinese company, this is some pretty huge advancements. And ultimately, I think NVIDIA should really start taking notice. As always, competition is essential in every industry because it drives innovation, causes companies to lower prices. It's, it's always just better for the consumer. Now, when it comes to performance, or before I get to that, I will say one of the biggest reasons why it really ends up winning whenever it comes to 4K, because you'll notice in just a second that it actually does do worse at 1080p and 2K, but then at 4K, it ends up doing better. And one of the reasons for that is because it comes with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6, versus the GTX 1650's four gigabytes of GDDR5. And what's wild is that with recent price cuts, the MTT S80 is very close in price to the 1650, even though it comes with significantly more VRAM. So with all of that said, let's get down to the performance. And like I said a minute ago, you can see that the MTT S80 does lose about 1080p and 2K, but it ends up winning at 4K. Now, as you can see right here, it's only 21.1 FPS, so obviously it's not playable at all, but when we move over to, say, League of Legends, at 4K, it wins, and it's a whopping 277.5 FPS. Of course, with that said, keep in mind that if you're gonna be paying $150 for a GPU, you likely don't have the best, most expensive 4K monitor. You're probably looking at 1080p, and of course, in that situation, the 1650 is significantly better. But still, because it does have a much better frame buffer, and because games especially newer games, not League of Legends, but newer games are really requiring more and more VRAM. So at least for a few of you, there may be a decent reason to purchase one. Moving on, we can see Valorant. It's the same story as well as this game right here. Now with Valorant, once again, you're actually looking at 84.8 versus 66.9. So, I mean, this is a fairly significant boost at 4K. All in all, I will say that it's really impressive what the company has been able to do with this GPU. And speaking of GPUs, AMD's newest RDNA 3 card is finally starting release all over. But first, you may notice that whenever I move on to another Chrome tab or I show an image or pretty much anything, I end up tapping, clicking over here. Well, that's because I'm using this awesome piece of hardware right here and today's sponsor, Loop Deck. And this is the Loop Deck Live S. It's an incredible tool that lets me essentially do everything. Whether you're streaming and you need to switch between different scenes, you can see here it says just background. But if you need to switch between the different scenes in Streamlabs desktop, also opening a file, opening an app, you can see I have some apps here, a website, you can do pretty much anything. You can set it to use shortcuts. I actually use Premiere Pro, quite a bit of shortcuts when I'm doing my editing. It has these turn knobs right here. It's set to volume for this one, and this right here just adjusts the backlight, but you can use it in things like Premiere to adjust your timeline. You can set folders, or these actually have what they call pages, but you can have an unlimited number of them, which means you can effectively have unlimited actions. And because this is a screen, you can change the icons. You can use animated icons. I have these right here are animated. Have it changed to a different one when you press it. Like for example, this right here, this is the one that's 
activated right now, and that's why it's lit up. So it effectively uses two different images. There's seriously an endless amount of things that you can do. It's not just for streaming. So enhance your production, streaming, gaming, or anything with Loop Deck by using the link in the description below. Now back to the story. If you remember not too long ago, AMD announced the RX 7900 GRE. At the time, it was only released in China, and if you wanted to buy it, you had to buy it with a PC. Well, things are now changing. But before I get to that, let's quickly go back over what the 7900 GRE is. As you can see right here, it comes with 80 compute units, which is 5,120 stream processors, gaming clock 1,880 megahertz, boost clock 2,245, 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. And when we compare that to the 7900 XT, you can see that it has a little more cores, 5,376, versus 5120 it's actually 5% on the dot more then obviously this one has 20 gigabytes of memory versus 16. But what was so interesting about this is the fact that it came in at just 650 bucks. So basically it was a little worse than the 7900 XT, a little lower clocks, fewer cores, so not a giant difference but quite a bit cheaper. Well that GPU is now showing up kind of all over. You can see this was just two days ago. The RX 7900 GRE was found in Europe. You can see it right here, 720 euros. And then shortly after that, it was then spotted in Italy for even less, 672 euros. And of course, I don't really want to compare pricing between European countries with the US just because the prices can be wildly different. But what's interesting is that it isn't just coming to OEMs, it's actually coming to the DIY market. So these, as you can see here, this is sold as its own GPU. It's a Sapphire Pulse RX 7900 GRE. So just the GPU itself. And obviously if it's coming to multiple places in Europe, it will likely come to the US and other areas as well. Now, I can't say that definitively, but it is looking really good. Basically, this could be really good for gamers who don't wanna spend $1,000 on a GPU, but you're okay with maybe spending around 650. Of course, the 7900 XT has come down in price as well, so hopefully this 650 will get even lower, but of course, time, as always, will tell. And next up for today, if you've been following the channel, you know that it seems pretty conclusive at this point that NVIDIA is planning to release RTX 4000 Super Cards. With that, it looks like we're finally starting to see specs. You can see right here that the well-known leaker, Kobai7 Kimi, tweeted out the specs for three of the upcoming Super Cards. And I will say that you may have noticed that I mentioned performance, and that's because unlike when there's a full new generation of cards, these super variants are using the exact same architecture, all of that stuff. So when we have cores, we can very easily extrapolate around what performance we can expect. Of course, it doesn't include clocks, but once again, because this is the same architecture, we aren't going to see a massive boost in clock or anything like that. Either way, starting things off, we have the 4080 Super, and it comes at 10,240 cores. And that essentially is using the full 8103 GPU. Moving on, we have the 4070 Ti Super, and that one comes with 8,448 cores, and finally, the 4070 Super with 7,168 cores. When we compare these to current cards, we can get a very good idea of just how much more powerful they're going to be. Starting things off, we have the 4080 Super, which I will say is only just a little over 5% more cores. You can see there's still a significant difference between the 4090 and 4080 Super here, so it really is looking like just a small boost in performance, but of course, if what we've been hearing is true, it could even be cheaper than the regular 4080. Then when we look at the 4070 Ti Super, you're looking at around a 7% increase. Then when we look at the 4070 Super, we're talking a massive increase, over 20% versus the regular 4070. Actually, this I would argue is probably just gonna be fairly close to the regular 4070 Ti. And of course, if it sells for anywhere near the regular 4070, that would be a great buy. Basically, these super cards are looking fairly similar to the regular 20 series super, but of course, it's all gonna boil down to price. And lastly for today, it feels like we've been waiting an eternity for this, but it looks like AMD is finally gearing up to release their Ryzen 7000G 
desktop APUs. As you can see right here, this was actually an OPN leak from this Twitter user. And believe it or not, it gives us a little bit of the specs for a couple of the Ryzen 7000 APUs as well as their naming. Starting things off, you can see that AMD is apparently planning to release not only regular G series processors, but also pro variants. And at least according to this, so far we're only seeing two of them, the Ryzen 5 7500G and the Ryzen 3 7300G. And as you can see down here, now I don't think we're 100% sure on the core counts. It actually states that they should maintain these cores. So I'm not 100% sure on this, but it does at least list a 65 watt TDP for both of these. And unfortunately, we do not have information on the GPU, but it's almost certainly gonna be at least RDNA 3. Either way, as you can see for the 7500G, we'd be looking at six cores and 12 threads, and the 7300G would be four cores and eight threads. With that said, these obviously aren't the most interesting versions of those APUs, but this tells us that they are in fact coming. Hopefully AMD is gonna be going over eight cores this time around, maybe even getting up to 12 or 16. But of course, that's just my hope. I don't really have any information that says that they are, but fingers crossed. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD's upcoming desktop ABUs, or are you more excited for NVIDIA's upcoming GPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out Loop Deck down in the description below. And as always, have a great day.